Hey guys, so last week you guys really liked the uh, Groki, I mean the uh, Sabo video that I uploaded where I painted him with the other starter. I think Pokeplay was the same, uh, performing at a concert, kind of just introducing the new starter to the Pokemon fanbase via the old starter. So I decided to do it again since you guys liked it a lot. I was gonna originally do um, Score Bunny playing soccer with a Diggersby, cheering it on just because it's an inside joke with one of my friends, but I couldn't get score bunny to look okay or even remotely decently so i just went with Groki because i just like him more in general and he's really fun so he's a little drummer boy drummer pokemon and i think he's gonna just evolve into a i think just monograph type maybe with a normal in there so i decided to draw him drumming obviously but i put rowlet playing an instrument kind of just playing with him introducing him being his friend and all that and i didn't know which instrument to give Rowlet, so I kind of just went with a tambourine. I didn't know what else to give him. He's just an owl and he doesn't do much, except, you know, be pretentious and that's why I love him. So right now, as you can see, I just started drawing his face. I drew both Rowlet's and Groki's eyes as just lines instead of actual eyeballs because I didn't like the way the eyes looked in my other piece with uh, the Sobble just having this like blank dead stare and the Popolio just it looked really derpy, so until I get more practice with eyes, I just drew them as like little happy dashes, which kind of fit into how I ended up coloring this piece. But as for right now, I'm just, uh, as you can see, just adding in the drum set. I made a very basic little drum set. I wasn't going to give them like the full, you know, the full set drum sets, which have like 15 different drums and like three cymbals, four cymbals, four cymbals, I think. Because he's just a little boy. He's a tiny little monkey. I was just going to give him the basic drum set. Um, yeah, I messed up here a little bit. I resized the, the drum and that ended up making the lines a lot thicker than they should be. I think I go over and redraw them later. But overall, I'm just drawing a little stool that he's sitting in at, at this point. For this piece, I kind of got the idea from just wanting to have the starters like play together and be introduced and make it kind of like a whole complete set. But I don't think I'm going to do score bunny at this point because, as I said before, I can't draw her. But I got him in the park because in my last piece I realized the background looked very flat and static. It was just an empty stage with nothing on it and just a random ball in the left side. And I didn't like how it looked. It didn't really seem as free-spirited as a performance should look like. So in this case, them being grass Pokemon, I took them out and I put them into a park, which you're going to see later on as I finish the line work. You can see here the sketch is how I wanted to put a fence there and a tree, clouds and all that. I ended up going a little bit simpler route. As you'll see later on, I, I changed up a little bit as I went through with what seemed a little more appropriate. Now, as for drawing the uh, Rowlet, it was actually really easy. He's not, he's not a hard Pokemon to draw. Very simple little circle, just a flat static circle with a little bow tie and the wings. I liked him a lot. His beak, I just, I don't know how I did it. I just naturally got a perfectly correct beak on the first try. His bow tie, though, I go back and I fix it a couple times here and there. Yeah, there you can see I tried doing the little, like, green, um... What do you call that? Like, the back of a suit. The coattail, I think is what it's called. And it, I couldn't get the perspective right, so I just didn't draw it. His wings, though, I kind of just went a little freeform in there. What I changed a lot from this piece, from the previous piece, is that in the last piece, when I was trying to draw Popolio and Salvo, I tried to mimic the drawing of the original piece exactly and I tried to draw as closely to the source material as possible and it didn't look right, it looked off because obviously it's not my style and I've never drawn it in it before. So in this one I tried to just go a little more natural, be a little less perfect, just let a couple mistakes go out here and there to just see what my natural drawing style would look like drawing these characters and I ended up liking this piece a lot more than the other one because it actually looks like something that I would draw. It's not, it's far from perfect but I really did enjoy how it came out. Here, I start just lining out the background and put a little clouds there, just trying to make it as basic as I could. Because at this point, I started realizing that in my last piece, everything looked really weird because everything had an outline. And obviously, you expect a painting to just do the outlines first and then color them in with paint. And I realized that was a problem because it made everything look like a coloring book. And that's not the look I was going for. So as you can see here, I resize everything, and uh, at this point I haven't figured it out yet, but a little later on, I realized that I have to erase most of the line work that I do to make it appear a little more natural. 
And here I start with the sky, and this is where you start noticing this. I draw the clouds just naturally with a wet paintbrush brush, really, the one that blends the colors together underneath it, and it gave a much more natural look, like they actually look like clouds flying through the sky and not just a black outline cloud slammed, like a sticker slammed onto the, onto the sky, and it looks a lot better. Because if you look up at the sky, there's no black outline around a cloud. There would be a black outline around like a tree or a house, because that's just what our eyes perceive. But on a white cloud, on a bright blue background, it, they just blend into each other. So I decided to just uh, try this out and just go the entire painting using the wet tooth, the way the wet paintbrush uh, brush using it, and just having all the colors blend with each other, and just see what, just experimenting with the different brush types and see what would come out. Here with the tree, you can see there's blue from the sky mixing in with it, and I didn't like it at first, so it just went a little bit darker. And as you, as later on, I actually start appreciating and just going with the blending colors a little bit more. I didn't like how I did that branch, so I just covered it up with green. I realized, I put the light source on this piece on the top left corner as you would a sun, but it didn't actually draw the sun. And here I continue, I draw a little bit of flowers. Uh, yellow and orange flowers, and I, again, I just erase the outline just to try to make it seem a little more natural as if these were flowers on the ground. They wouldn't have a black outline. And since I'm using a wet paintbrush, it would mimic closely what a watercolor would do, and you don't use that many outlines on watercolors. You kind of just let the paint flow itself. Uh, at this point, I realized the background was a little bit too empty, so I asked some of my friends to give me suggestions as to what to draw on the background, and a friend of mine said to draw a bush. So I did. And that looked very simple and plain being green, so I just added a couple of uh, purple berries on it. And again, it's just very imperfect brush strokes, kind of just placed plastic on top. And I actually preferred it over to what I'm usually doing. I usually draw, I mean, I usually paint very thick, uh, static colors, right? So like if I were redrawing this like I did the other piece, the sky would just be a solid blue color with maybe some gradient here and there. It wouldn't just be the blending white and blue with some pieces a little whiter, some pieces a little bluer. No, I went with a little more natural feeling and I, I love it. I loved how it turned out and I appreciate it a lot. Here I went back in the outline. This is another thing that I did differently from this piece from the last piece. With the last piece, everything that I drew, the poplio, the sabo, the background, everything had its own layer in the credit program that I'm using. In this in this uh, painting, I decided to just do everything on a singular layer. Line work, all of it in one layer, all of the color in one layer, except for the background, that I did differently, you'll notice why later on. And by doing so, I was able to just more freely blend the colors together and it just seemed more natural, like a more natural painting style, like, I, like if I was actually painting on a canvas in real life. There's no layers in real life, you kind of just go at it and paint and whatever happens, happens. So I went with that here. I couldn't match the color exactly even though I was using the eyedropper tool. So I just uh, went back and just slid it a little more in a greenish tone. You'll see a little bit later coming up. Uh, with the wet uh, paintbrush that I was using this time around, the blending came a lot easier and it actually looks a little more natural. And a lot more closer to the source material. And Because Pokemon aren't static color. They're gradient. They have shading. They're alive. They're living creatures. At least in universe. Uh, but his color scheme was a lot simple, just a couple browns, orange, light tan, green. And here you can see the shading came a lot easier in this piece. And I have to go back every now and then and just erase the line work because I keep forgetting to do it. Uh, I fix up here. Here I made a mistake. It, you'll see it come up later. Uh, that green that I just painted there, I painted that on the line work layer, not the color layer. So when I go back and erase some stuff later on in the piece, I'll point out where I made the mistake and how to fix it. If you're doing this, just make sure always keep your layers in check and check which ones you're drawing on. Because if you draw half a piece in one layer and half the other in another layer and you're trying to move stuff around, it, it becomes a mess later on. Here the stool, I just made a brown. As for the color of the drum set, I didn't want to make it green. I was going to make it a shade of green because it's a grass type Pokemon. But I, di I didn't, it was too much green. There's too much green in this piece. So I just had to go with as far away from green as I can get and I went with purple and blue. It kind of stands out a lot. It seems fun. <laughs> like, Groki seems like the kind of Pokemon that would just get whatever bright colors he could find and drum them out. He wouldn't really care. So I just went with it. I went purple and blue, coloring it in. Uh, adding a little bit of shading, not that much. I didn't want to go as crazy at it as I did with the other piece. His drum set was nice. I really appreciate this one. I don't... 
I don't think I'm going to attempt the uh, score bunny one, but I hope you guys like this one. As always, the uh, picture is going to be in the description after this. You guys can download it, it'll be fine. Now, with Rowlet, Rowlet is actually a Pokemon that I personally picked for uh, Sun and Moon, and I love it. I love the archers in uh, Fantasy, and I love how that plays out. And Rowlet, and by extension, um, his later evolutions, really just spoke to me, and I love the Pokemon. And here, uh, with his uh, feathers, I just did the regular painting and shading. I, I'm not really skilled enough to do like detailed uh, feathers yet, so I just left him at that. His bow tie got the color perfectly right on. Again, here I tried to do the coat tail again, didn't like it. I just erased it and forgot about it. Go back with that. And as you can see, there's uh, I overlap. I go over the lines a lot on the outside. I go back and fix that later. I just did. I just wanted to. to make my brush strokes as naturally as I could as if I was painting in real life and just painting it over later. Uh, bottom is just white. I tried painting with the background off, it didn't look good. So I just turn it back on let the colors blend a little more. Uh, the beak was just a regular orange color. I love how his face turned out. Now for the tambourine, I just made it a natural uh, shade of brown as if it was a wooden tambourine with silver... Uh... I don't know what those are called. Symbols? Bells? I don't know what they're called, but the little circular things that make noise. And here I go back and slowly erase all of the parts that went outside the lines. For the background, I left those in because I just like the imperfect look that it gave off. And maybe I think I'm going to start painting like that from now on. And to see how that evolves into my own style. Because I don't know what my style is in digital art yet, I'm still figuring that out. Now the right side, it looked very empty, so I decided to add a little pool. So I just went with a long brush, kind of just experimenting again, just making a little pool, and I decided it didn't look good, so I drew some, uh, some rocks. And at this point, the color of the rocks seemed very uh, homogeneous, so I just decided to shake it up, add a little brighter browns, lighter browns, a couple of grays here and there. And at this point, I wanted to include a little, little easter egg on the side, so as you'll see now, I'm going to start drawing a little sobble in the corner. Envious of the friends that his grass started Pokemon counterpart made. It's kind of just sitting there in the corner. Slightly translucent, you know, being the salamander? I think it's a salamander, I'm not sure, but he's over there, just shy in the corner, wanting to have fun and listen to music, but not really having the guts to go out and be friends. I had a little more, I had some flowers, some pink ones here. I probably should have added more flowers if I was going with this, but I was running out of time and just decided to go with it. And this, I don't know where this came from. It was just a giant purple streak through the page. I don't know what happened, so I had to go back and repaint all this so they couldn't erase it, or else I'd erase all the green color in the bottom. After I found that out, I just went back and finished the rocks. I loved the process of this piece, and I want to keep painting in this like imperfect, wet paintbrush style. There you go. I painted them. That's where I painted on the wrong layer, and it looks all messed up like that. I had to go back and erase it. Yeah, but I loved it, and I really hope that I can paint like this again. Oh. It's gonna come soon to the uh, final picture. Just putting in a little more berries, a little more bushes, just fill the background. I erased some more lines on the trees because I just wanted to keep a very light-hearted tone. And here's the final piece. It's on the description light descri description box if you want to download it. Um, you can share it on as much as you like. Just remember to credit me. I'm. I hope you guys like this video as much as you did the old one. And if you did, please just leave a like and subscribe. It would really help a lot. Bye.